Good evening and welcome to the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education regular meeting for Wednesday, March 18th, 2020. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Please call the roll. Carlin? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmsted? Here. Peschel? Solange? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we will uh, proceed to the Pledge of Allegiance. We don't have any students with us this evening, but we'll um, be thinking of them as we're saying the pledge tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We will move on to uh, board and administrative reports. Um, I have a rather brief report tonight. I did uh, find time yesterday, keeping my distance from people, uh, to visit a couple of the lunch sites, and I was most impressed with uh, what I saw in terms of the uh, food service staff who uh, were serving the meals, and I was most impressed um, by the the care, concern, and love, respect that was shown by our staff members uh, for the students and their families who were there. The gratitude of the families and the, and the students was most evident in their um, sincere thank yous, and you could see on their face how grateful they were for the food. So I'm, uh, I told uh, the, the food service people at Webster Stanley I considered them rock stars because they're truly making a difference in the lives of these children and their family members. Mm -hmm. um, some were not aware that the, the food was going to be there Monday through Friday, so I clarified that. And uh, in the 20 minutes that I was at Webster yesterday, there were at least 65 parents and children <coughs> who, who showed up for that time slot. So uh, very, very happy to see that. Along those lines, I re when I opened my mail at home today, there were two envelopes in there that were, were personal. And I wish to turn one of the contents of those envelopes over to Dr. Cartwright at this time. A retired teacher has sent in a check to the district to continue that meal program in the amount of $500. Wow. Thank you. Wow. That's so great. we thank you. that teacher nice. and um, encourage others to support that program as well. Um, anytime a person starts to thank individuals, um, there's always a danger that you forget someone or a group of people. Um, and so knowing that I will probably overlook someone, I'm, I'm going to take that risk. Uh, I want to extend a sincere thank you to Dr. Cartwright and the entire Oshkosh Area School District team, teachers, custodians, secretaries, principals, uh, food service, tech uh, people, and so on for all of the preparation that has gone into uh, responding to this national pandemic. Um, the communication that has gone out to the families and to the district at large has been most impressive, and the preparation for the at-home at learning mm -hmm. has also been most impressive. When I was at Webster yesterday, I ran into a gentleman who was both a reporter and a photographer for USA Today and said that Oshkosh, in his mind, was a model district for the country. And I believe we owe that thanks then to Dr. Cartwright and her team for recognizing um, where we are at this point. So thank you, Dr. Cartwright and the entire OAS OASD team. Thank you very much. And um, on behalf of the district, we are extremely grateful for the recognition because it truly is a district effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Most welcome. With that, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And we're going to go ahead and um, transition on over to our, our district report. Um, I think there's some tonight maybe a little bit different than what we typically do. Um, they're going to give some emphasis on things that we uh, need, some needs that we currently have as a district as well. Uh, we do have on our landing page of the district website um, a section that is specific to um, all of our communications and resources uh, to the COVID-19 incident right now. So anyone who is saying I may not be getting information or what is it that the district is really doing, those type of things, please just go to our website. So that's um, it's oshkosh.k12.wi.us. 
and excuse me. <coughs> no, I'm not sick. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> I'm hot sick, I promise. So I swallowed the wrong way. <clears throat> um, and me's done. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. So my apologies. Um, we know right now we're pushing out a lot of information to our families. Um, so families are getting communications not only from the district office, but they're getting it from schools. Um, they're getting it from at the school level. They're getting it from their classroom level, from their teachers. Yes. We we completely understand that this is a lot of information for people mm -hmm. to process through. We are extremely appreciative to our families of that of understanding that yes, we're having to do this because we're online and we want to make sure that our parents know what's going on and our caregiver, caregivers know what's going on and what they should be doing at home. So thank you for their patience. Um, thank you for them and, and going in there um, and taking time to go through the information that we're sending out to them um, and working with, with their children at home during this time period um, so that learning continues to go forward. So we're very appreciative of, of our communities for that purpose. Um, and we know obviously it's unprecedented right now, um, but again, we're just really, really thankful. Um, I'm going to kind of take you through this just a little bit. We, as a district, actually have been planning um, on this, this particular situation for over three weeks now. Um, so prior to the state even talking about it, um, prior to getting any direction from DPI, um, you please be rest assured that we were already meeting. We were already having the Winnebago Health Department representatives come over and talk with us. We were already having those conversations. Um, that's when we were taking a look at our pandemic plan and um, contagious um, disease plan in, in particular um, and making uh, revisions that were needed to it at that point in time. Uh, but we were in the monitor phase, as you might say. Um, being in the monitor phase means that we enact pieces of the plan, but not the whole thing. Um, and so, for example, there was communications um, that went home last week uh, where we had to do some deep cleaning on some of our school sites overnight. Um, and that was not as a result of an infected person being in our schools. I want to make that abundantly clear. This was not a case where there was a confirmed case of coronavirus or um, COVID-19 and, and then they had gone into our schools. That did not occur. It was a case of secondary contact. Individuals were not, sh they were not showing any symptoms or anything else like that. The health department basically told us no action is needed. As a district, we chose to take the action that we made um, and doing a deep clean of the entire facility. Again, it was out of abundance of caution and precaution, not because it was a need given to us by the health department. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, so that was, but that's part of our plan. Um, being initiated. So as an example, well, I'll be frank with you, Friday morning we had a meeting. Um, so all of our um, executive team members had a meeting with our technology integration coaches, our media specialists, our curriculum and instructional support teachers, and our technology services staff. This happened on Friday morning. Um, and this is where we were pulling the trigger to, or I shouldn't say that, this is where we were making the decision to okay, we're gonna to need to close schools, um, the district, and go to the at-home learning environment. That morning, um, Dr. Gunlock was talking with them and shared a lot of information with them, and of course expressed to them, um, you know, we know it's gonna be nearly impossible to get this done for today. The realistic expectation is Monday. Um, folks, he, and he saw a very concerned look on my face and turned the meeting over to me at that point of which I expressed to this, these groups that I just mentioned, if all humanly possible, we need it done today. Mm -hmm. um, we do not want to be in a position of taking a chance of we don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Board, I'm here and very proud to announce to you that our technology integration coaches, our media specialists, our curriculum and inst instructional support teachers, technology services staff, pulled it together. Mm -hmm. They got done in one day an enormous feat and we are incredibly proud of them um, 
it took a lot more than them, of course, in order to do this. We know that um, because our classroom teachers are critically important as this. Our paraprofessionals were critically important, you know, grabbing materials and putting in the backpacks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this truly was a district-wide effort um, in order to make this happen on Friday. So we are incredibly thankful to the entire staff of the Oshkosh Area School District um, mm -hmm. that they were able to, to get this accomplished um, for us so that we could go into a um, at-home learning or virtual environment um, in order to take the abundance of precautions and safety um, for our students and for our school community. So uh, just wanted to at least let you be aware of that. Um, with our grab and go free meal program, I need to explain a little bit about this because there may be some confusion about that as well. Our grab and go free meal program currently is being offered to anyone who, who shows up at our school sites. This can be a student or a non-student. Um, we do get reimbursed, um, but we get reimbursed only for our students. But we're extremely mindful and understanding that uh, for many of our families, you know, when you get into scarcity of food and not having it, what will, what will happen more than likely is the food kit will go home with the student if we don't feed the family, this is what will happen. The food kit will go home, um, and then it will be parsed out, it'll be rationed out so that everybody in that family unit gets something to eat. Um, that takes away from the nutritional values of these meal kits, because they are put together with specific nutritional values, and it also takes away from the quantity of food that that child is going to be able to eat. Given this and understanding um, the seriousness of the, uh, the situation at hand, at this point in time, um, we made a very distinct um, decision. We also had a little bit of seed money. It's not a lot, but it was, it was enough for us to get started on this, uh, to go ahead and um, feed the family unit because we want our students to be safe during this, this time. Um, we care about our families and we want to be able to provide this service to them. As long as we have funds, as long as we have funds, we will be able to continue to do this and as long as we have a food supply. Yeah. So those are our two parameters that we're working on right now. Um, as, as long as we have a food supply and as long as we have funds, we will be able to continue to be able to do this. Um, we're, look, we're working through details right now. So for example, we're going to feed people over spring break. Um, but candidly speaking, even for our, our students, as it is today, we're working on, a, on, on a, a waiver for this. As it is today, over spring break, we will not get reimbursed, for students even. Um, so having donations coming to the district right now is critically important for us. Um, for those of you tuning in, you'll see on the screen ways in which you can make a donation. Um, it's very simple. If you want to come directly to the district, please, all you do, do is just either mail a check, um, or if you want to drop it off, you can drop it off. Uh, if you do this if, with attention of our business office, um, our address here is 215 South Eagle Street, um, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54902. Um, Three. Three. That's a piece well, that's the PO box. Okay. No, it says five four nine zero three up there. Yep. For the PO box is five four nine zero three. However, right. if you're coming here, it's five four nine zero two. Yeah. That's okay. Um, please indicate if you're doing a check, um, grab and go free meal program or COVID nineteen or free meals. Something that indicates that we know that this is what the money's for, um, so we can earmark it into the proper funds. If you are an organization um, and you want to ensure that you get tax credit for this, um, please go ahead and make it payable to the and um, drop it off with the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation earmarked basic needs fund um, or Oshkosh Area School District. That way, that we know they'll know to get it to us, and we'll know what that money is being used for. Um, once. If the government um, changes our reimbursement, we'll be sure to just as we're
put it, pushing this information out quickly, we'll be sure to revise our communication that we don't need any more money <laughs> at this point in time because the government is not paying for it. But until then, um, we do need donations. So I'll restate that to make it clearer. Individuals who would like to donate so that we can feed families, not just students, um, please drop, drop off here at the Oshkosh Area School District or mail to the Oshkosh Area School District. Um, put in the notations for grab and go meal program. If you want tax credit, send it to the Oshkosh Community Foundation. Attention also again for the Oshkosh Area School District basic needs. Um, so that way we can do that. I'll let you know, um, just so that you're aware, right up front uh, this morning uh, did a public ask um, at the Greater Oshkosh um, Economic Development Board um, Committee Board meeting and we have one of our businesses already step up and is making about a $15,000 um, contribution wow. for this program right away wow. and and said let us know if you need more um, so We've got some major things happening. We are extraordinarily grateful, extraordinarily grateful. And I'm just really hoping that the, the public understands we are truly trying to take care of everybody to the best of our ability. Yesterday was the first day of the Grab and Go program. Um, we were able to distribute 866 meals mm -hmm. um, to, that would be about 433 people because we do lunch and then breakfast for the next morning. Um, it was mostly to children. Uh, I do not have today's stats for you just yet. I will have them at some point in time. We know as this condition continues forward, this need will only increase. It will not decrease. Um, 866 meals, that's approximately what we do during our summer feeding program. Um, that's our average. Um, and this was the first day. So we hadn't had time to even really ramp up, um, as you might say, uh, and to, to get to an average. Our need is unknown. We do not know and, until we get a few days under our belt how much this is going to cost us long term. Um, and so, because I know people have been asking, how much do you need? We just don't know because we don't know what we don't know just yet. Um, but we're going to continue to work on this program and try to ensure that we are taking care of our students, number one, um, and then our family units um, with them. I'm wondering if there's a way to put that, that number out on our website, just like a ticker. Yes, the, the, uh, there's formal communication that will be released from the district tomorrow morning. Okay. With this request. We kind of need to watch, you know, like what will not need. I, that's a wrong attitude. Oh, excuse me. I'm mean thinking ticker. of like how many lunches, breakfasts and lunches are served each day through the district during this whole thing. It would be a number without an adjective. It would be a number that would, we would might want to watch at okay. the time. We'll, we'll see what we can do for that. It's just an idea. Yeah, we'll okay. see what we gotcha. we'll see what we can do. Okay. Dr. Cartwright. Yes. Could you please, for the greater good, say how you can donate online through our website if you want to donate? Thank you. Yes, um, we usually push uh, the good news report out um, so people will see this it, when they receive it. However, um, if you want to donate online or an electronic donation, please visit this. Um, it is www. Um, Oshkosh Area CF, so that would be O S H K O S H A E R A C F dot org forward slash fund forward slash Oshkosh hyphen area hyphen school hyphen district hyphen education hyphen foundation hyphen basic hyphen needs hyphen fun forward slash that's a lot <laughs> do you think oshkosh community foundation would be willing to put that link on their home page for us i will reach out to mr wyman and oh, see if that's that something easier. that's possible yeah good idea stuff <laughs> that might be easier <laughs> <laughs> thank you and like i said tomorrow we will have this being pushed out in a public way okay um you know through our typical pushes Great. and on facebook as well yeah. so that different organizations you know for example like positively oshkosh mm -hmm. can pick up on it and push it out as well got it thank you thank you so we thought 
we wanted to do a very public thank you again to our community. Um, Dr. Gunlott's going to come up and talk about this a little bit because, quite frankly, had the district not been successful a few years ago on an operational referendum related to learning without limits, we would not be able to do what we are doing right now because, technically speaking, our students just wouldn't have had the devices in their hands. So, Dr. Gunlott. Sure, sure. Um, first off, I'd like to echo what Dr. Carwright said in terms of uh, thanking the um, tech support team, the instructional tech coaches, the media specialists, and curricular ISTs. Um, they, they did a wonderful job on Friday, uh, but it wasn't just them. It was also a lot of the building teaching staff and, and the rest of the staff. They solved problems that we didn't even know were problems before we even knew they were there. So there were, there were a lot of people who came up with awesome ideas. Um, it was a really awesome team effort. But uh, the other group we wanted to thank were, were the taxpayers of Oshkosh because um, you know, if you look at the screen, way back in 2014, this was actually the title slide for our referendum for learning back in 2014. Um, version 4.1 you can see down in the corner because we gave that about 50 times. Um, this was how that referendum was broken down. I don't think everybody really realizes that today, but um, two and a half million, the blue part of the pie, was for district operations. That was refraining from us having to make some pretty significant cuts to exist, existing programs. Um, the green slice is 1.45 million. That's what we use to light up our Learning Without Limits program. And <clears throat> while that program does a lot um, in terms of classroom technology, the goal at the time was to provide personal access to technology for students and staff to participate in connected learning activities. That started the journey. Um, we spent a lot of time with the tech integrators working with teachers. We started at high school, worked our way down, and um, quite simply, it would have been completely impossible for us to do what we're doing right now and for them to do the work they did on Friday morning had we not already been down this road. Um, other districts have been contacting us uh, trying to figure out what to do now. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is if you don't have a program like this in place, you're out of luck because you're not getting hardware right now. Um, we just purchased uh, 2,300 Chromebook replacements for our middle school. Those were in a warehouse squirreled away for us. Uh, and um, if we had not done that, they would be gone. Uh, that's what they've told us. Um, the other thing that's really exciting about this point in time right now is that we uh, were able to get an order of Khajiits in. You may ask yourself, what is a Khajiit? We've had several people, most people, uh, according to our latest Bright Bites survey, 96% on average of our homes have internet in the home, um, that mean, which was higher than I thought it would be. So that means we have about 4% of our students who do not. So the question was always, okay, they have a device at home now, what are we going to do about this? Um, as part of our strategic plan, we were going to be purchasing remote hotspots or come up with an option to do that. A lot of people have stepped up. Charter Spectrum has stepped up and this information is on our website. I know, I know they're super busy right now because they're, allowing pe they're giving away free uh, Wi-Fi for people so they're able to reconnect back to the good things that we're doing. Um, we also purchased 200 of these. And this little device that looks like a hockey puck in my hand is what we call a Khajiit hotspot. This is a mobile hotspot for our students and these are going to go out starting tomorrow. Um, the device is, is really easy to use. It's got one button and one little screen and it tells you exactly how to log into it. And that's all you do and it just sits there and works and it's battery powered and it provides internet connectivity to the home. Um, it's, we're focusing it on grades 6 through 12 right now because that's where the, the deepest part of the online learning is occurring. It, provide, it, it comes with its own filter, so um, kids are going to get filtered twice. The GoGuardian filter that we put in place, and this has its own filter built in. Um, it's limited to 500 megabytes of data per day. Uh, it will reset every day, and the hours of operations are 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. The ones that we purchase, these, are, these are, are what we call set it and forget it kind of devices. Uh, they're going to work really well in the home. So we're really excited those are going out. Um, and just to show you how awesome your tech services staff are, we are trying to figure out how we would do that and how we would get people to come to get them because buses may, may not be running, they may not be able to get here for transportation. Um, the tech services team said, well, why don't we just take them to the homes? 
So we're going to be doing home delivery, and we've already, we've already, we'll, there'll be a communication going out to families tomorrow. It's targeted to 612 right now. Um, if we have extras, we'll, we'll broaden that out. Um, and uh, we've already got 15 people who have submitted requests right now since, and it's not even really out yet. So um, we'll be filling those orders as, as soon and as quickly as we can. So, Do you uh, need volunteers excited. for that? No, we should be able to do it. Uh, we're, we're really confident we're going to be able to uh, get these out as they come in. And uh, um, we're, we're pretty excited about being able to offer this. It's a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, we had to be get really creative with the budget, uh, but we made it happen. And uh, uh, they were really good. Uh, when we ordered these earlier in the week, had we waited six hours, we would have been out of luck because everybody in the country is going for it at once. So um, uh, we... Uh, shout out to Lori Mortensen and uh, Sally Glander in the business office. It's the first time in my 10 years where I've ever dropped a purchase order and said, I need you to drop what you're doing and order this right now. And they dropped what they were doing and they ordered it right now. So that's, you know, kudos to them. So that's all I had. Thank you, Dr. Gunlott. The rest is yours. Um, I did, I need to go back just for a brief moment on the grab and go meal program uh, for community members or for those individuals who would like um, to, who have a need um, in order to participate, please go back to our website. On our website, there is a link on there that will um, take you to information related to this, including the site locations and hours. Um, and the other thing also is once you get your meal, please go. Um, and don't take that as a rude statement, uh, please. We, we really enjoy our community. We really enjoy the presence of our community. But in this particular situation, we really want you to pick up the bag and, and go, go back home. Um, we are, we're trying to our best to ensure that we are doing the social distancing. That is why school is off. Um, and, and at the same time, make sure that we're taking care of our, the need um, for this. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to transition over into some good news. How's that? Um, additional good news. Roosevelt Elementary students recently enjoyed a performance of opera for the young, featuring the school's very own fifth graders. A great time was had by all. Roosevelt also recently celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthday and Read Across America. Between the dress-up days and PBIS Seuss bingo that was live streamed throughout the school, it was a wonderful celebration. Oshkosh West High School students in the Academy for Global Studies enjoyed a visit by the author of the best-selling book, How Dare the Sunrise. The book retells the story of a massacre in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 2004 explores life as a refugee and immigration to America. Global Academy's Level 2 students also recently attended the Great World Text Conference at UW-Madison. Students read the novel Kiss of the Spider Woman and then created projects demonstrating their analysis of the novel. The Communities Program at Oshkosh North High School is studying religions of the world. Students recently had the opportunity to visit a Jewish synagogue in Oshkosh. Using Judaism as a mentor text, the students then branched out to investigate other major religions and teens. The goal of this project is to connect students and create empathy through gaining knowledge and learning about culture. Students at Jefferson Elementary School recently had an all-school celebration of karate. Students earned this celebration by following the patriot, patriot way of being respectful, responsible, and safe. <laughs> Typically, this, this slide is very full, uh, but being very frank with yeah, you, um, <laughs> Uh, all public um, appearances and, and anything that did not necessita necessitate um, a face-to-face -face meeting or multiple virtual meetings or phone calls um, in order to um, get ready for what we're doing and the, uh, our current pandemic. Um, so obviously I have not been in the community as much as normal. 
Um, so with that, uh, at this point in time, if everyone is, is okay, um, Dr. Herzog, I would like to ask Ms. Schnoor to come up in order to give her administrative Please report. Do. Please do. As you know, every crisis does provide some benefits, um, and the benefit of this is the incredibly low interest rates um, have produced an opportunity for us to refinance. So in your board packet, I showed you four different scenarios um, that we are looking at, and we will continue to evaluate those different scenarios. Um, so at the first April school board meeting, I believe um, someone from PMA is our financial advisor. She will do a workshop with the board and what those different scenarios are. And then we may end up having to have a special meeting to pass a resolution because our second board meeting in April is until April 29th. Um, so we may end up having to do a special board meeting just to approve a resolution, resolution to refinance. Um, but know that we're continuing to work on this and that there is um, significant savings to be had because of the lower yeah. interest rates. So that's Awesome. Thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of your work on that. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. You That's a lot. Dr. Gunlock, yeah. Excuse, excuse me, Dr. Cartwright. Dr. is mixed up here. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's always a team effort. It is a team effort. That's correct. Do we have any board committee reports this evening? All right, moving on then. Uh, I believe no one signed up for the non agenda related public forum nor the agenda related public forum. So we will move on to our first and only workshop item, which is selection of architects for phase one of the consolidation plan with Dr. Gunlock, uh, Mrs. Schnorr, and Mr. Fox. And we are limiting that to Dr. Gunlock at this point. All right. Yes, so uh, you know, I have to give credit. The first, there are several slides in here that are really uh, Sue Schnorr and Jim Fox's material, but uh, we can't sit together. So, oh, um, <laughs> so uh, I, I'll be I'll be going through some of that with them, but they're here to if we in case we have any questions. Okay, um, we we are pleased to bring before you the architect selection workshop for tonight. Um, just to give you a little, uh, it's a fairly uh, brief process, but in our typical request for proposal process, uh, the proposal was emailed out to 15 architectural firms. A notice was placed in the newspaper that the district was soliciting proposals, and then the district received five proposals. They were evaluated using a rubric by both Mr. Fox and Ms. Schnorr um, along the, f the following criteria. Um, the, did the firm have experience in Wisconsin? Uh, that's important. We tend to have things like winters here, so that's a good thing. Um, fee structure, uh, what is their fee structure? The referendum experience, references, office locations in proximity to the district, because this is obviously a, a long-standing project. Uh, elementary school experience and middle school experience, for obvious reasons. Those are the two big parts of the project. Capacity to handle the project. These are large initiatives. Proposal readability and green design. So that was the initial vetting that occurred uh, for the 15 uh, firms that were solicited. Based on the rubric scores, three firms were brought in for interviews, McMahon, Hoffman, and Bray. Uh, the finalists pr participated in two-hour interviews, and really what it was, was they had the first hour to essentially present to us whatever they wished, run the process how they saw fit, and then we had the second hour the, to pepper them with questions and then get into a two-way dialogue, and, and it was a great experience. Um, the data in terms of the cost analysis, as you'll see there, they have pre-referendum costs. Uh, Bray had 4,500, Hoffman 14,900, and McMahon was 33,400. Those are the costs prior to going to referendum. And then the rest of it is relatively simple. It's a percent of project architectural fees. Now, I just put up there, you know, an assumption of a hundred million dollar project, because uh, originally it was a hundred and seven million dollar project, just for just for ease of comparability. And you can see there that uh, Bray Architect was uh, the lowest cost on all fronts. Um, what was really great about that is they also were the highest rated in the two-hour presentation process. So um, had we did not look at cost at all until the very end. So we went through the, the presentations and then we brought Good forward choice. and said, okay, now who's our first, second, and third, and now let's take a look at the cost. So it made our decision very, very easy. Um, and really that takes us down to our recommendation. Uh, the, we're, um, the recommendation would be for us to select Bray Architects and to proceed with them 
on the project and they would provide the services necessary for us to to begin doing the construction or the uh, uh, creation of, of drawings for support in a, a potential referendum. Okay. Did I miss anything? Are we good? No, we're good. I, I, I just want to add, you know, I, I was very thankful for the time that all the interviewers gave to us. Each of the teams being interviewed uh, thanked us that we gave them two hours. They said that we they normally, normally only get 30 minutes. Oh. Um, so the tours that we gave them, I feel, really gave us a fantastic look into who they were, what they offered. They were able to take their time and really thoroughly explain what they brought. Um, I know that, that I was appreciative. I think they were appreciative. So it was a really uh, a well done process. Yeah. Good. Good. And they all did really, really well. I mean, they're, 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 the, the, there were pros and cons in each of the category. So. Well, it's nice to hear of your process. It's also nice to hear that the, the lowest cost um, paired with the fact that they were the the ones that met your criteria the yeah. best, mm -hmm. uh, made for a, a good recommendation. So a win win. Thank you for all mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Right. All right. Any that other questions it. or comments? All right. Moving on then, um, we have our consent resolution agenda for this evening. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Uh, I've had a request for 6B and 6C. Are there any others to be pulled from the consent agenda tonight? Okay, seeing none, uh, the board will consider approval of one, minutes of the February 26, 2020 regular board meeting, two, minutes of February 26, 2020 <coughs> executive session of regular board meeting, number three, minutes of March 11, 2020 special board meeting, number four, minutes of March 11, 2020 executive session of special board meeting, number five, bills payable, number six, personnel, a, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, and salaries. Number seven, purchase of a property located at 1241 Kentucky Street, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Number eight, applying for COPS safety grant. Number nine, selection of architect firm for phase one of the consolidation plan. Number 10, NEOLA policy updates. A, policy 2340, district sponsored student trips. B, policy 5111, or 5,111, eligibility of resident, non-resident students, and C, policy 5113, open enrollment program inter-district. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Szilagyi? Aye. Szilagyi, aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Resolution 6B. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the retirements as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Uh, I was the one who had asked that this be pulled. Um, it always amazes me that um, people I've known for a long time are suddenly old enough to retire, and uh, we want to wish them <laughs> all the best in retirement for a long, healthy, and happy retirement, and to thank them for their years of contributions to, the, to our district. Uh, included in this retirement tonight are Alice Graff, who is retiring as Administrative Assistant from Oshkosh West High School. She has been with the district since 1986. Michael Hill is retiring as the Learning Lab Resource Teacher at Oshkosh West High School. He joined the district in 1996. Jacqueline Lundquist, school secretary at Perry Tipler Middle School, joined the district in 1994. Michael Shea, assistant custodian fire person, currently at Lakeside Elementary School, joined the district in 2012. And William Stenz, science teacher, chemical hygiene officer um, at Oshkosh West and North High Schools and Central Administration, has also been with the district since 1995. Again, we wish all five of these people uh, a long, healthy, and happy retirement, and thank them for their many years of service to our district. They represent well over 100 years of contributions 
to the success of our students. Any other comments, questions? Please call the roll on Resolution 6B. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Szilagyi? Aye. Szilagyi, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Motion carried. Next is Resolution 6C. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the administrative appointment and salary schedule as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a new administrator uh, being proposed for appointment this evening, and I will turn that over to Dr. Cartwright for comment. Thank you very much, Dr. Herzog. I'm very pleased to announce to the board that I'm making the recommendation for John otherwise known as Drew um, Nihans to the position of Executive Director of Business Services. Um, Drew has uh, rose, clearly rose to the top um, during our interview process. We had a very strong pool of candidates. We um, ultimately ended up um, interviewing five candidates originally um, and then narrowed that down to two on the second interview. Um, and candidly, almost either candidate would have been just fine. Uh, there were very strong candidates, uh, but ultimately uh, we did decide to go with Drew. Um, a little bit of information about Drew that may comfort you as well is he's an Oshkosh resident, um, and he's also one of our parents um, that has a child over at Oshkosh West High School. So just a heads up, uh, you know, He's been in the community for a while, and I, I would foresee that he's probably going to be in our community for a while as well. So without further ado, I have turned it back over to Dr. Herzog or to anyone who may have questions. Is there anyone who has any comments or questions on this appointment? Um, we, are, we will be happy to welcome Drew to the district, and we know that he has good shoes, big <laughs> shoes to fill since uh, he's replacing Sue Schnorr, So. <coughs> All right, please call the roll. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Szilagyi? Aye. Szilagyi, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Next, we move on to individually considered resolutions. We have two this evening. We'll be, um, because they are individually considered as defined, we will pursue them <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> So resolution 11, be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the increase in pay for substitute teachers from $105 to $130 per day for work completed at Emmeline Cook, Jefferson, Merrill, Oaklawn, Reed, Washington, and Webster Stanley Elementary Schools. Merrill and Webster Middle Schools, or when substituting for a special education teacher position and from $105 a day to $120 per day for substitute teachers in all other schools effective April 6, 2020. Be it further resolved that the hourly rate for the substitute teacher coverage stipend be increased from $16.80 to $18.60, I believe that's per hour, effective April 6, 2020 as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion. Dr. Cartwright, did you wish to? Um, we just want to emphasize, um, in case people are curious why we're doing this, um, the Oshkosh Area School District is currently experiencing a substitute teacher shortage. Um, upon review of our daily rate and looking at what that daily rate is for, with surrounding districts and within our region, we found that we were one of the lowest paying districts in the region. Therefore, we made this recommendation to the board um, in order to um, up that rate of, pay, of pay so that we are definitely um, competitive at this point um, in order to attract individuals to come and substitute within the district. Given that, we're also looking at a two-tier process, as you, as you heard in the resolution. The purpose behind that is because in some of our schools, it is definitely more challenging to find individuals um, to come and come and serve as substitute teachers. Um, and students um, from the schools that were listed, um, most the, which can, are a majority from the north end of our district, um, come to school with a lot of um, concerns and a lot of heightened level needs, as you might say. And, and we mm -hmm. want to recognize that 
there may be more needed by an individual in order to be able to attend to those needs in an appropriate manner with their, um, and help our students. So that's why we went to a tiered approach. Um, so it's not only that, but also for um, substitute teachers for special education teachers is last um, very difficult to find someone who wants to go into special ed classrooms. Um, and so again, that's why we have the tiered approach. Um, so for those schools that were mentioned, plus a substitute te uh, teacher for special education is at that higher rate of $130. All, everything else is at the rate of $120. For the teacher covering another class, um, we did change, make the recommendation to change the hourly rate, um, so that way they are not, they're matching that $130 hourly rate. Um, actually, they're slightly higher, but not much, um, than the $130 rate, so that way we're being equitable across the board uh, with this approach. Any questions or comments? Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. That's right. So, um, first, I want to um, thank you for for proposing the steps. So, I think it's important. I think um, I have had lots of comments from teachers, from students, and um, from substitute teachers. So, uh, related to this this issue, specifically, a lot of the schools that 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 this is being targeted to assist. So. Um, I think it's a step in, in, a, in, in the right direction. Uh, but with that, I have to uh, present myself that I have a conflict of interest with this as well. So um, my wife and my mother-in-law are, are both active substitutes within the Oshkosh Area School District, and so I clearly benefit from this, from this increase, so I will be voting present today. Thank you for that uh, revelation. <laughs> Any other comments or questions on this? I know the district has, has had a shortage of substitutes for many years, and I think this will not only make us more competitive, but it will say to both our outside substitutes coming in, some of whom are retired staff members, but also to our staff members who are asked to do the uh, coverage of another teacher's class, that we value them, and this ties back to our strategic plan. So. Um, Unless there are any other questions or comments, I'll ask that Mrs. Collins uh, re take the roll, please. Herzog? Yeah, aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Special? Present. Special? Present. Salaji? Aye. Salaji, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we will move on to Resolution 12. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve revisions to policy 0167.1 voting as filed with the secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> well, that was about as close to a tie as I ever in a while. <laughs> we'll see how Mrs. Collins her. doesn't do it often. <laughs> she's, she's the one who makes the decision. Okay. All right. Um, this one was a proactive. Um, resolution that came to us uh, from Dr. Cartwright in view of what's going on nationally with the COVID-19. So we'll turn it over to her. Thank you very much, Dr. Herzog. Um, as current on our current policy right now, uh, board, mem board meetings have to occur physically um, and board members have to be physically present. Given the COVID-19 um, situation that is occurring, we needed to explore the options of being a have this meeting occur virtually. Um, and so that or through call-in, one of the two. Um, so the revisions to the policy that's in front of you um, have been vetted through NEOLA. Um, and this is actually um, something that they have pushed uh, across the entire nation in order to give um, boards the flexibility to continue to have board meetings, um, but in that virtual or telephone environment. Um, and literally probably about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, we also were given um, guidance from the Department of Justice um, and on specific related to virtual meetings and open meeting law. So you have a copy of that in front of you uh, as well as the source where you can look at that online. But I'm just going to read a portion of this if that's okay so the general mm -hmm. public is aware. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, 
It says the Wisconsin Department of Justice Office of Open Government has prepared the following advisory in response to inquiries as to the applicability of the Wisconsin's Open Meeting Law, Wisconsin Statute 19.81 to 19.98, in light of current public health concerns regarding COVID-19. This advisory is provided pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.98. Um, as explained below, governmental bodies typically meet their open meeting obligations while practicing social distance to help protect public health by conducting meetings via telephone conference calls if the public is provided with an effective way to monitor such calls, such as public distribution, at least 24 hours in advance <coughs> of dial-in information for a conference call. Um, and it continues to go forward. Um, the open meetings law does not require that all meetings to be held in publicly owned places, but rather in places reasonably accessible to members of the public. Um, this is an attorney gen general's opinion, um, 69, um, excuse me, it's the 69th um, opinion of a general attorney uh, yeah attorney, attorney um yeah 143 144 from 1980 um he's quoting 47 of that general uh, um, opinion as such the department of justice's long-standing advice is that a telephone conference call can be acceptable method of convening a meeting of governmental body more recently the department of justice guidance deemed video conference calls acceptable as well um, and so just wanted to, and that's a, as of May 2019. Um, so we just wanted you to be aware that um, even look at this policy by putting this policy in place, obviously um, doing what we're proposing here is for those unusual circumstances that we are currently in. Um, it also provides in the, in the future to where if there's, for example, a board member who's maybe on a trip or is at home sick but wants to participate, they can call in. Um, so it gives the board a little bit of, a little bit of flexibility um, to be able to conduct business because candidly speaking, we still have to meet, we still have to pay our bills. There's a lot of things that the board still needs to take action on. And of course, our board meetings going forward until we resume normalcy um, will be pretty abbreviated as to what's on the agenda to essential business only. Mm -hmm. I have a few questions. Questions, comments? Mrs. Olmsted. Thank you. Um, my first question about, so when we, if, for instance, we do have to do this come April, May, June, whatever may happen, um, if we're having a conference call or a video call with us, seven, including yourself, eight of us, and then obviously Teresa's secretary, on here it says that the public has to be able to call in. We have that capability. We do. Um, so I I've already that, no, I've already asked Dr. Gunlock to check into that. Okay. We have the availability to ha have this in the virtual environment with up to a thousand people. Perfect. And we will record it. If we get to and we will people, post it. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, so we'll record it and we will post it. Okay, good. And then they can call in too, like or not call in, but people can call in and listen to it live, uh -huh. and then watch it afterwards too, or uh -huh. listen to it. Afterwards. Or they can watch it. Live. Or watch it live too. Okay. What, what's that okay. My second question was it's in here um, as a board policy for future um, thoughts. It says in here that um, a board member, a board member's presence at a meeting includes his or presence so and so forth. Is there any co so this came from Neola that they ha want us to um, word it this way. Is yes. this what they're suggesting? This is their suggestion, okay. uh, though there were not alternatives. Okay. So do we want to put anything in here that this is under um, emergency circumstances or ab different circumstances? Because I don't know that I want it in the future that any board member can say, hey, I just don't, I don't want to come in. And so they don't come in and they're calling. So mm -hmm. that's my only question about this, that it's not, um, there's nothing in there about why they would call in or why we wouldn't meet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, 
Yes, I think you may be covered on that because it's saying, okay. um, and l let me explain why, and y'all, we can continue the sure, conversation. Okay. Uh, remote access during quasi-judicial um, functions, e.g. termination hearings, expulsions, mm -hmm. may be per permitted after consultation with legal counsel. Mm -hmm. So that means we're going to be running stuff through legal counsel when we do this. Okay. Um, I think that would probably be a deterrent okay. um, for a potential board member that just doesn't okay. want to come in. Okay. Um, but okay. Frankly speaking, if we wanted to add the words to it, um, a board member's presence at a meeting includes blah blah, you know, going on and telephone or other manner of remote access. So as long as it is compliant with state law, and is um, in, in an emergency situation mm -hmm. um, or unusual in an unusual situation, right? right. I think yeah. you can add that without without modifying the intent, right? Um, but this, again, yeah. uh, of doing that, in, but maybe not emergency, but unusual circumstances. Right. Um, yeah. So that way, if you're on a con if you're out of town, <laughs> you know, yeah. right. that's unusual. Uh, but you want to participate, you know, via okay. phone. That gives right. you that flexibility. Okay. And also, if and when things get back to normal, we can always revisit the policy and change it again. Back to. Back mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to add the unusual. I do too. Like mm -hmm. this I agree. just seems like. Oh, do what you want to do. I don't know. This, and we won't. You're a board. We some won't. Of us won't. But we. But if we don't change we this, and we're not on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think. I think that board members need to. This needs to continue and need to be here. I don't want to give flexibility. If you're going to run for the board, you need to commit to being here and doing this work. You can't. You know, I don't know, but I would say for most of you here, when we plan vacations or outings or stuff, I never go on the week that we have board meetings, or I try very hard to not miss any. Um, so I would want that to, you know, continue to be a. Uh, That's important. Yeah. Right. Okay. I believe there's another part of state law, and I don't remember what mm -hmm. section that is, but it's that. I believe it's in the section that deals with um, duties or responsibilities of board Elected. members, and oh, I'm quite and sure that it yeah. states in yeah. there that the expectation, or I don't think it's worded as a requirement, but the expectation is that board members do attend board meetings. Okay. And I Thank think that's are. very important in terms of the intent and the history of open meeting laws in the state mm -hmm. of Wisconsin. And I believe that the Wisconsin Association of School Boards would also see it that way. Right. That we mm -hmm. want as much as possible for these meetings to be open, transparent, and available to right. the public. Right. And so I have no problem with the additional words okay. that you two are suggesting. Okay. May I make a recommendation then? Sure. Um, so the sentence would state, when in an unusual circumstance, a board member's presence at a meeting includes his or her presence and, and continue. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Good. I agree. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would be very uncomfortable if we had a board member who viewed every, under normal circumstances, viewed right. every meeting as an exception. and wasn't physically present, but only yeah. wished to be present online. I don't think that would be the intent of Wisconsin Open Meeting Law, nor the intent of state statute relative to the responsibilities of a right. school board member. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a, a request. Um, if we put this in front of legal and they say no, the change on this does change the s huh. the substance of this. Oh, right. Okay. Do I can will the board also give me permission bypassing this to have and, and we'll have we'll figure the wording on this so we can say it correctly in the resolution for for Dr. Herzog. Um, give me the flexibility to remove it um, so that so way that we get it passed. We get it through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know y'all have to roll call all this, but yeah. I'm just for yeah. conversation purposes. And we will re this because it's a change in policy. It requires a two thirds vote, which means five mm -hmm. members have to vote in favor of this. Correct. Okay. okay. I had a question. Yes. What if we um, all end up being quarantined and we cannot leave our houses? Worst case scenario. Do we just not meet, or what's our plan for that? Well, the plan for this is candidly going forward right now. After tonight, we will not physically meet. Right. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll be on your computers. Right. Um, it'll probably be, for example, like Google Hangouts. 
Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. That's just an example. Um, we'll, we'll communicate with the board specifically okay. how to do that with very specific directions okay. for you. I miss that. Because <laughs> okay. okay. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> we will. <laughs> yeah. With, with pictures. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll be I'll be candid with you. It's, yeah. it, if we're if we are using the Google Hangouts thing, yeah. um, I'm being very blunt with you. Yeah. Uh, it's a calendar invite, and you just click on the link, and it's it automatically yeah. takes you there. Oh, awesome! <laughs> but oh. I guess I'm and, the, and for the community, we'll put right. a link out as well. But we're only doing that if we have to, because we all prefer face to face. Yes, yes. we do. Okay. That is correct. But I'm going to be very frank with you. Um, the governor came out yesterday yeah. and closed the school districts down indefinitely. Yeah. Um, doing this setup the way that we're doing tonight is, is okay. There's no public here. Um, but if we had public here, we would be exceeding what the recommendations are um, as far as mm -hmm. even for school systems mm -hmm. um, and trying to keep less than 10 people in the room at the same <clears throat> time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely making the recommendation to the board that our next board meeting at this point in time, because it's April on April 8th, um, be virtual. If this is approved and we're good on this, just to do the social distancing and not take chances um, at this point. Now, that may change, right? We may get through the rest of the month and everything clears up and we're all good. That would be nice. If that occurs, then we can go on from there. Um, in the current board policy, just so that you're aware, so let's go to worst case scenario. All of you get it. You're out of commission. We don't have a quorum um, in right. order to do board business. There is provision already in board policy that gives me the authority yep. to act outside of board policy and, and to make decisions yeah. and yep. to keep the district running. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, we looked at that yesterday. I agree. I would rather do virtual. I really would. I would. This is. I've been staying home, and we. I would rather do virtual until this is blown over. And I mean, we're really at the beginning of it. We are mm -hmm. just in the. You know, Wisconsin's just getting on the track, and and from what I read, you know, and just the news um, for CDC just in Wisconsin, that numbers will double. You know, every day they're going to yeah. start doubling now. That's what so they're doing. Yeah, I don't. I would rather do virtual. I absolutely would. Mr. Peschel, I believe you wanted to weigh in here. Sure. Well, I was going to state what Dr. Cartwright just indicated, that if there was the possibility that we could not meet, she has the powers to yes. continue the operations of the district outside mm -hmm. of that. So yeah. um, so we know that we're covered and in good hands with that. So um, I, I kind of feel the wording that, that's being suggested, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I think it's too broad. In my in my opinion, okay. um, I'd like it to be more specific to um, specific to states of emergency, like that we oh. where it states specifically because of a state of emergency that uh, right. that we have that we have these this ability to to still conduct public sessions in that way. Um, I believe the broader that it is, the more the easier it is to be to be taken advantage of in future councils especially if we don't look at it every year. My other suggestion is that if we were to, um, if we were, I think if we were to put in the wording, like what's being suggested outside of the state of emergency, I would ask for there to be a sunset put on that, mm -hmm. meaning that we would come back and that it would be part of the policy, that we look at that policy every year, conduct a study of whether we feel that that oh, is yeah. being misused or in uh, such so that we have some level of transparency over um, some actions that we that, 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 that govern us um, and I, I think it's really important and I only suggest this because I think it's it relates to future councils mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. one, one of our jobs is, is to make sure that business goes as usual but is also to make sure that the operations of this body, uh, is operating in the most ethical and moral means. Okay. Okay. So, I'm not wrong with that. I so, like that. Yeah. If I may clarify just for a moment, um, if we go with the re with um, the recommendation that Mr. Peschel is talking about, please be aware that would limit um, the ability of the board if you're out of town 
um, to call in. You would mm -hmm. not be able to do that. Um, just just so that you're aware of that. Yeah. Um, so no, I'm, we're good. Would, I'm just letting you be aware. Yeah. Of that. I would respond that you know in in the last three years I've been out of town once and and you know that you know that's 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 the thing that we do. We expect that if there might be possibilities that take us out of town for business for business and family and and stuff like that. And I think it's just our responsibility is to make that aware ahead so that Dr. Cartwright and her staff can build the agenda appropriately or you know if we need that you know that that two-thirds vote on something that's really important that we're communicating that out and everything and and right now I think we're doing a really good job of that so mm -hmm. um, Although it would be nice if you were out of town planning on being back in time got delayed somehow be nice if you could still participate yeah if we're having a big discussion and you really want to yeah. ask mm -hmm. questions and talk yeah and it's through no fault of your own it's just your Question, are we going to make it a choice? Like, can some people do virtual? And if people mm -hmm. felt coming, but good coming in, could we offer a choice or too complicated? You mean the, the meeting in the April? Next meeting? The meeting next in April, meeting. yeah. Is it all or nothing, all virtual, or can we choose? I'll be very candid with you. If there's a need for us to go virtual, I would truly say, all or nothing. Okay. Yeah. Did you disagree with that stuff? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. curious. Okay. Right. And only because it defeats the purpose. That's the only reason I say it don't like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And the the virtual is really just around the realities that we can't meet the minimum the the the, the, the social yeah, distancing less. of ten or less. Is yeah. I mean, even now, the, even where they're now saying we should be six feet apart, we're, we're whereas not. apart we're as well, as as much as possible. Yeah. 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 Camera, right. So, um, so I was late to this meeting today, and I'm, I apologize for being late. I was at a city special city council meeting, and this is actually one of the topic that we were discussing and mm -hmm. for, um, and um, that just just so that you guys understand how the city council is handling that, they're yeah. we're virtually talking the same the same language, except um, we passed an ordinance today, the state the city the state of emergency for the city. That um, basically governs how long we can we can operate uh, in that in that type of way, either virtually um, or via phone uh, and stuff like that. Um, and it's right now it's only for the, the the term of this of the state of emergency. It's indefinite. Oh. So it's indefinite. well, yeah. Governor Evers hasn't given an end date. The correct. That's that's changed recently, but when when the city when the city manager when what I'd have to look back at it now that you say that it was originally until what the original the April, April was April sixth sure. was so, sure. then, um, yeah. but you're right. Uh, but the reality is that what it would do is that it would just expire after oh. it, it would have to come back to us and we would say that we're lifting that state of emergency oh, yeah. and, and those measures. Uh, wouldn't be uh, utilized anymore unless we went into another state of emergency. So, was there a reason that you did that instead of just saying when in a state of emergency, the comma, all the things get? From what I understand is that because of the action of issuing a state of emergency, it automatically covers and allows for that to happen. There's 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 measures, there's measures that exist in order to be able to keep government running mm -hmm. that allowed for that so but and, and I bring that up is because what we're yes we're under a state of emergency related to Governor Evers but uh, the ordinance that the city brought up was related to their the city's right. ordinance and this is different than that this is a policy that we're talking about mm -hmm. amending um, and um, and and that's where I think that if we're going to amend a policy that revolves around voting, mm -hmm. as a as a board member, mm -hmm. we should be very specific as to uh, what those examples are of which, uh, you know, we would we would suspend the rules of some sort. Yeah. And I had a question kind of related to that. I listened to the WASB um, webinar yesterday mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. decisions that are going to need to be made, et cetera. Um, 
if we need to meet urgently, mm -hmm. are there ways we can get around um, or expedite public notices? Like, how is that going to work if you need us to vote on something quickly? Do we have the authority, because of the state of emergency, to maybe, you know, just give public notice that day or something? I don't know. I it's think from what hours. Hours. Okay. 24 hours is all? There has to be at least 24 okay. hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. okay. okay. It's in the, yeah, it's in the second paragraph. Okay. It's a good question, Steph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess, you know, coming back to that word of, you know, vetting that against, uh, you know, towards a, getting a legal opinion on something like that, I think that's, you know, something that if there was a rationale for it, we'd seek a legal opinion about whether we are able to do that or not. Mm -hmm. So. Well, if we, um, in, the, in the statement, in the sentence, in this third line, which begins a board member's presence, if we put a phrase in front of that which said, during a time of um, a declared emergency, comma, a board member's presence, mm -hmm. Would that take care of that? Because then it would, that your duration would then end with the emergency, emergency yeah. uh, declaration. But then you will also renew what Mr. Evans right. was talking about. Can we about. put That's both true. in? Can we put, you know, declare a state of emergency and or un, what word we're using? Originally, unusual, unusual circumstances. circumstances. Can we put both in? Then it covers both. Well, I then it takes yeah. it like, yeah, yeah. interesting, yeah. Then it's yeah, yeah. it that. really kind of needs to be okay. one or the other. And we really need, I, I'm advising the board, let's be very careful about how much additional language we're putting in okay. here. Because we might not be able to get it to go I, through. Okay. I feel that this is being brought up because we're in a state of yes. emergency and yeah, that's, that's what the policy should right. relate to. Okay. And we can always revisit it okay, in the right. future to, to, okay. um, con to consider unusual circumstances. So when students are back in school and okay. there's more norm normalcy in everyday life, then perhaps the wording could be adjusted. Okay. Uh, we'd have way. to, we'd have to, the, the policy and governance committee would have to put it back on there. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, to, and, and do we, <coughs> the other suggestion, not a suggestion, but since if we pass this today, is this something that at the next policy and governance meeting, when it's scheduled that, you can provide us um, that report back related to if there was any legal issues and or, or anything that came along. With that. Know that before. So in, o in other words, what I'm hearing you mm -hmm. tell advise me is stick to what it is right now. Yes. Put it on as a future agenda item um, for policy and governance at our next meeting with the languages, um, the two different languages that y'all have been talking about tonight, uh, the state of emergency language or the um, unusual circumstance situation. Bring it to the next policy and governance meeting once I have legal advisement as to how to word it on either of those yeah. scenarios. Mm -hmm. And then um, bring this policy back to the board after policy and governance um, for for whatever future revision the for board the would like final, to make. Yeah, but let's pass this. But for now, tonight, so to let it go sense. as is. Yes. Am Absolutely. I understanding this correctly? Yes. Then we know it's going to go through. So. Right. Yeah. Because if we don't pass this this evening, we will need to meet in, in this yeah. location, in this configuration on April 8th, and we don't know where this virus situation will be in yeah. Wisconsin. And then at that, that point, a lot of us might say we're not coming, and then we won't have a, I would rather err on the side of caution, who knows what's going to come April 8th, and then uh, two, three of us say, no, I'm not coming, because, you know, so-and-so had it, or my parents, or I've been exposed, or whatever it may be, I'd mm -hmm. rather just go virtual, and then we all can, even if we're sick, you can still be on the call. Yeah. That's a good call. You haven't said anything yet. Do you wish to say anything or no? No. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, though. Sure. So are we saying we're going to, the vote will be on this as written? Is that what we're saying at this time? Yep. I am most comfortable with that. There I said my thing. <laughs> and then following up um, on the previous oh. conversation about having this reviewed by policy and governance. Yep. Or any additional recommendations okay, on you. modifications or changes? Yes. Yep. And that will probably be done online too. Then, right? 
Um, I'm probably going to make the recommendation to this board to pause on all subcommittee meetings until we get out of a state of emergency. Okay. I agree with that too. Unless there's something that we have, I mean, if there's something that has to come to education policy or even um, facilities, facilities, let's just look at it as a whole group right now instead of you know having 12 different meetings just just like this one. This didn't come to policy and governance obviously mm -hmm. before tonight. No. We can discuss that and get it done too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, if I, I would not. I would not vote on that because yeah. we're not noticed. No. To no, vote no, on no, that. No. No. I'm not saying. It's yeah. Just I'm just letting you. Yeah. Just for just. Yeah. Can we discuss? I don't know if we can because it's not on the agenda. Can we discuss about um, the April 29th special board meeting? Can we discuss that, that one or not? Reorganization meeting. Yeah, the reorganization meeting. Can we what, talk about we don't, that? Uh, we don't know what we don't know yet. Okay. Um, being, I'm that. being okay. very honest with you no. right now. Um, because I don't talk about board meetings, but I, we have a special board meeting. It, the reorganization line yeah. covers regular and special. Okay. So it would still be a conference call meeting. Yeah. Okay. If Maybe. the state of yeah. emergency is still Great. in place. Oh. Okay, good. So yeah. If that's included yeah. in this, yeah, that's what yeah. I was asking. Thank you, Liz. What's of prime importance is that the school district Bob. Get sworn in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you don't, if we miss that cutoff in April, then those seats are vacant. You mean okay. the next the new, yes. the, 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 the persons it who are elected yes. to serve get sworn in? Yes. Okay. <laughs> in a, in a timely manner. Elections. Ohio has moved. We can't because election. Wisconsin has constitutional offices tied to the April election. So, so it, it has to be held. Right. Got it. Yeah. What they can change is whether there's actual locations and how you vote at those loca locations. Like right. they can emphasize on making ballots available and stuff like that without having to actually go I into a location. Do you believe that today is the deadline to get an absentee, absentee. ballot? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which you can do well, online. Which you can to do get, online. To get online, you can still go to City Hall and get a get an absentee ballot, mm -hmm. and you can still register the day of. Oh, yeah. I'd so just, can yeah, we, Dr. Yeah, Cartwright yeah. and Mrs. Collins, can we still swear in the new, whoever it may be, the new? They just need to come into my office. Okay, great. Good. Yeah. And that can be done anytime, anytime after, after the election. After the election and before the reunion. <laughs> right. Okay, great. Any other tape measure for uh, six foot? <laughs> <No>. I would. <laughs> right? What if we? <laughs> No, okay. no, please. I'm really trying to keep us on yeah, topic just, here. That's why I asked if it was. I just because it's, it's part of a board meeting. So it's I part of the idea of teleconferencing. Yeah. Doing yeah. that right before an election <coughs> raises those questions of will that be teleconferenced too? I understand. Yeah. Okay. I suppose swearing in couldn't be teleconferenced. No, nope, we're good. I'm no. just no. Yeah, that, one, that I think yeah. has to be in person. Yeah. yeah, we need to stick with what we're noticed to okay. talk yep. about. Though. Thank you. So Sorry. Let's come back to that. Um, Okay. Mr. Peschel has left the room, so. Do we need his vote on this? We need two yeah. thirds vote. We only need five. Okay. It's just rude to vote without him. That's all. <laughs> we can do it. Hold us. He had to go to the bank. <coughs> he didn't excuse himself. And it's close. It's right there. If they missed us where you So there's like a camera out here that we do that? Right? Yeah. So will the screen show all of our faces with this virtual teleconference? Yeah, really yes. Um, <laughs> that's a very good. So candid in my pajamas? All right. Yep. Well, we will give you I wouldn't. I have to lock a door, and if you hear a little noise from behind, I apologize that my kids are You're going to see my eyeball. Uh, it'll be fun. I think if we wait until 20 after 7, okay. Okay, we got to vote, dude. All right, I'm sorry. Seriously, Bob. I never thought about it. All right, are there any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Szilagyi? Aye. Szilagyi, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next agenda item, then we have requests for future agenda items. Are there any agenda items you want to request for a future meeting at this time? If you think of anything, you can let uh, Dr. Cartwright know. Are there any oh. announcements to be made at this time? 
I have one not announcement, said. but I just wanted to also have a moment to say thank you to the teachers out there. So we had homeschool today with my kids. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> and we sat around the table and we went class by class, like, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? And, and um, I got to listen in on Mr. Levine's trigonometry class today. And? Holy cow, it was so funny. The kids, <laughs> like Zoe had her phone out. Um, and they had a they had like a live chat room, you know, and all the kids were on there, and some of the kids were a lot louder than the other kids, and it was just great to hear these kids teasing each other, having fun, laughing, yeah. asking each other questions, and they were all showing their cats and dogs in the yeah. video. <laughs> all of them, like everybody got to meet each other's cats and dogs, and then Levine was like, "Come on, let's get back on track," and he was like, and I didn't understand what anything he was saying because it was like, "Drop this, move this, no, I don't know trig." And um, it was just really good for me to hear these kids. It was a group of kids got together, and um, you know, so they were laughing and joking. It was awesome. So yeah. a big shout out to Mr. Levine for doing that this morning at 10 o'clock for yeah. an hour for trig. It was wow. <laughs> but then every all the a lot of a lot of the kids' teachers too. My daughter in middle school was. A lot of their teachers did um, face you know did videos and then shared yeah. them with the kids. Yeah. And they did yeah. these videos. It was so funny. And then. Mrs. Cole did her announcements yeah. this morning. She's like, it's Mrs. Cole with no makeup on. <laughs> it was just so cute. Yeah. yeah. And she did it, said happy birthday. To, I mean, it was just really good. So, and John Ryland made a video and Mrs. Goose, like all yeah. of these teachers just made these videos and the kids were laughing at these yeah. teachers. It was so good to hear their voices. So big shout out to the kids, the parents, or I mean, yeah. the kids teachers. and the parents, but the teachers, I mean, just to see their faces yeah. and to hear their voices and every single one of them said how sad they were that they weren't in it's classrooms cool. and that they missed their kids so much. Mm -hmm. So I have nothing but just, and good luck to the parents. Yes, like, right. That's, that's a good one now. Like, to good ten. luck to, yeah. to us trying to keep them on track and hopefully when you get, the teachers get our kids back, they're not gonna be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. So as parents, so, we still yeah. get to say, thank God it's spring break next week. Next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Right. Yeah. That is true. So I, I just a big thank you to all these par these teachers and principals and, and yeah. staff and secretary. And just it was great. We sat down. And I got to listen to other videos, and right. they were, it was awesome. It was great. Yeah, yeah I awesome. have to echo everything you're saying. These teachers yeah. are having fun with it. They and yes. They're rising to the challenge. They really and yes. Yeah. It's awesome. They it are just doing fantastic. It was really fun to see what some of them were doing. So I love to you, see teachers. the relationships between the teachers and their students. Mm -hmm. How much they really like each other, and how these kids respond. Know, back in my day. We didn't joke with teachers like this. Like okay. these kids have really good relationships with their teachers, and they're joking, and they're like, "Oh, it was just, it was, it cool. was really cool. Really it was cool. a great day with them." Yeah. Super. Any other so. announcements? All right. Then we will adjourn to executive okay. session. Number one, considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under Wisconsin statute section 19.85, uh, paren one, paren f. A, review expulsion recommendation from an expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others, endangered the property, health, or safety of any employee or school board member of the school district in which the student, excuse me, the pupil is enrolled, and who engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules under Wisconsin statute uh, one, 120.13, paren 1, paren C, paren E. B, review expulsion recommendation from an expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules under Wisconsin Statute 120.13, paren 1, paren C, paren E. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Heschel? Aye. 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 Aye.